Ho'onani, Hula Warrior. Ho'onani Kamai did not see herself as a wahini, girl, or think she was a kane, boy. She preferred just Ho'onani. She is who she is, her mother said. She does what she wants, her father said. But her sister, Kana, wished Ho'onani did not sing songs so loud or play ukulele faster and better than every kane at school. One morning, Ho'onani's teacher, Kumuhina, made an announcement. This year, they would bring a Hawaiian custom back to the community. Our high school kane will perform a traditional hula chant, she said. Closing her eyes, Ho'onani could almost smell smoke from the driftwood fire, hear feet stomp, stomp, stomping, see fingers tap, tap, tapping, and palms pitter-pat, patting. She sighed. If only she were kane and old enough for high school. Then Ho'onani heard auditions. Ho'onani could not wait to tell her family. There'll be three tests, she said, and Kumuhina thinks I should try out. Her father, mother, and brothers were not surprised. Kana rolled her eyes. Really? Ho'onani wanted to say she could not believe it either. But before she could speak, her sister changed the subject. The next day Ho'onani jogged to the gym, she peered inside. Strolling down the line, Kumuhina inspected each Kane's stance. On her command, their arms rose, bending at the elbows. When Kumuhina pushed down hard to measure warrior strength, Ho'onani's breath quickened. She should be with them. Her mind made up, she strode inside. One by one, their faces changed. A wahine, a wahine. Not a wahine. Last in line, Ho'onani lifted her arms. As Kumuhina pushed down, she held her place. Strong, sure, and steady. Ho'onani could not stop grinning when she told her family she passed. Kana frowned. How embarrassing. Her words made Ho'onani's chin tremble. She wanted to ask Kana if they could ride bikes again, like they used to. But before she could speak, her sister had turned away. Memorizing the sway and song of story took patience and practice. Ho'onani did not stop until Hawaii's history was part of her, in dreams by night and thoughts by day. Hands dragging across her face, arms reaching for the sky. As Ho'onani called the sun, the moon, the stars, she held her place, strong, sure, and steady. Finally, it was time to choose a leader. Ho'onani's stomach twisted in nervous knots. One kane, another, and then another stepped forward. Ho'onani studied them. Who was nervous or worried? Who stood tall? Who slouched? Who stayed focused? And who squirmed? Then, her turn. Faces swam in front of Ho'onani as she called for attention. Oh, I, oh. She paused. Would they follow her? No time to think. Words pushed against her lips and the chant tumbled out. Ai kamu mu keke. Sweeping her warriors into a tidal wave of voices until Ho'onani called the end. Hi ala, hi ala, e oi ai. Silence hung in the air. When Ho'onani saw complete awe and true acceptance, she held her place. Strong, sure, and steady. She was their leader. Later, Kumuhina beckoned her over.
Her teacher spoke with respect and honesty. She said some might not appreciate a wahine leading their sons up on stage. They might create a fuss. Ho'onani knew she could not quit now. She had earned this position. She thought of her sister and looked up at Kumuhina. If someone wants to leave, she said, that is their problem. That evening, Ho'onani couldn't wait to tell her family she had been chosen as leader of the Kane Hula Troop. Her parents and her brothers were proud, but Kana wasn't. Why do you always have to reject wahine things? Kana said. Just because I feel more Kane doesn't mean I'm not wahine. I'm in the middle. Why can't you just let me be? Me? Before Kana could speak, Ho'onani left the table. At last, the day of the show arrived. People lined up, tickets in hand. Chatter overflowed the hall. Lights dimmed. Ho'onani wanted to feel strong, sure, and steady. But she was nervous. What if she wasn't Kane enough? If people protested, what would she do? From behind the curtain, a voice boomed. The next day, the island shook violently. Tutu Pele erupted from the depths. Oli! Ho'onani shouted back on cue. Ready or not, it was time. And to the beat of drums, the thud of heels, the clack of sticks, she toe heel stomped across the stage. Ho'onani faced the crowd. Her skin prickled. She felt their curiosity stir the darkness, but she held her place, strong, sure, and steady. Ai ka mumu keke, her voice thundered. The crowd gasped with appreciation and roared with approval. One person stood. Ho'onani caught her breath. Kana? Ho'onani had found her place, not as wahine, not as a kane, but as a hula warrior. <laughs>